All right, guys. Well, what a difference an hour makes here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It was a beautiful day an hour ago here in the Finger Lakes of New York, and now it is a drizzly, ugly, rainy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Here on the first Monday morning of the fall of 2019, that would be Monday morning, September 23rd. 2019 so the big festivities are over and uh, before I get into today's chronicle of the collapse I just want to thank all of the very kind-hearted folks who uh, sent me birthday presents to say welcome to the 60s Sam and uh, anybody who has ever supported my work here on YouTube the little dog and I we really appreciate any donations to the cause here and as some of you might be aware I need to uh, head out and try to figure out how to get a New York driver's license since I no longer have a license to drive the the uh, ironic sense of humor from the universe getting uh, this depressed collapsitarian is not allowed anymore to drive a gas-sucking car. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to fight the universe. But before I get into that, many versions of this story uh, on the mainstream media this morning and several Alert Tribes members have sent me different versions uh, I was going to go with this one from the good old Weather Channel <coughs> title, just kind of a straight ahead uh, chronicle of the collapse titled Five Year Period Ending in 2019 Set to Be the Hottest on Record Sobering UN Report Says. All right, we now have a sobering. Uh, UN report. The I guess the UN reports have gone from dire to sobering. And the takeaway from this, at a glance, from the Weather Channel, impacts of climate change increased over the five years from 2015 to 2019. Unbelievable, did you think so? Greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere have increased to record levels over the last five years and most importantly there is no sign there is no sign of when the world will meet peak emissions and then they break down these three points and uh, but you know I think instead we're gonna go over and see how Al Jazeera is reporting on the same sobering UN study. Take it away. Al Jazeera, how are you reading the tea leaves? <clears throat> Climate SOS, five-year period ending in 2019 to be the hottest on record. If greenhouse gas emissions do not start falling soon, there will be hell to pay. Researchers warn literally hell to pay. Okay. Uh-oh, a damning. We've gone from dire to sobering to damning. So we have sobering on the Weather Channel. We have damning on the uh, on Al Jazeera. A damning new UN report published on Sunday warned that the world was failing badly. I'm sorry, falling badly behind. Hmm in the race to avert climate disaster as a result of runaway warming with the five years ending 2019 set to be the hottest ever. The damning, sobering, dire UN report <clears throat> comes ahead of a major United Nations climate summit on Monday today when Secretary General Antonio Guterres will push countries to increase their greenhouse gas reduction goals. <clears throat> According to uh, its authors from the Science Advisory Group, 
to the summit, the report, quote, highlights the urgent need for the development of concrete actions that halt global warming and the worst effects of climate change. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the average global temperature between 2015 and 2019 is on track to be the hottest of any five-year period on record according to the report, which was compiled by the World Meteorological Organization. According to the report, uh, to the, report the five year period, quote, is currently estimated to be 1.1 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial which they call 18 to 1850 to 1900 and uh, <clears throat> industrial times defined as 1850 to 1900 and 0.2 degrees uh, warmer than the 2011 to 2015 period. The past four years were already the hottest since records began in 1850. So once again, every time I do this rant, I have to stop here because records, but there were no records between 1750 and 1850. They make the baseline 1850 to come up with what they're saying now is 1.1, but if they were honest and actually went back another hundred years to 1750, we have clearly already hit this joke one and a half and are going nowhere but up, up, up. But anyway, you think Al Jazeera might have been able to put a little parentheses in there. Anyway, getting back uh, to the story, this is Tom Burke, chairman of the anti-carbon group E3G. Take it away, Tom. Quote, I think the danger is growing. That means we have much less time to solve the problem than we thought we had. Hmm. Basically, if we want to tackle climate change, we have to stop burning fossil fuels. Guterres said last week the world was, quote, losing the race on climate change with the latest report spelling out the extent to which the gap between what is required and what is happening is widening. Rather than falling, huh, carbon dioxide levels grew 2% in 2018, reaching a record high of 37 billion tons which might have something to do with the fact for the first time in history we are now bringing 100 million barrels of fossil fuels out of the ground on this planet every single day. This might have something to do with this. More importantly, there is also no sign yet of reaching what is known as, quote, peak emissions the point at which levels will start to fall. Yes, though these are not growing at the same rate as the global economy, that is a whole other story. Patrick Verkujin, chief executive of the Global Center on Adaptation, told Al Jazeera that governments needed to show more ambition to their commitments, not only in mitigation, but also in investments for adaptation, quoting Verkujin. The effects of climate change are here and now. Whether you are an auto worker in Bangkok or a farmer in Africa or an elderly woman in Paris, we are all impacted by climate change today, close quote. The 2015 Paris Agreement, uh-huh, saw countries lay out national targets to reduce their emissions in order to limit long-term temperature rise by either 2C or the, the bigger joke, one and a half. These are benchmarks that will limit in important ways the effects of warming on world weather systems. But 
even if all countries meet the goals they set themselves, the world will still warm by what they're calling 2.9C. Let's call it 3C, the report found. The current level of ambition would need to be tripled to meet just the 2C goal and increased fivefold to meet the 1.5C goal. Technically, still possible. Al Jazeera truly ought to be embarrassed. By, by, by saying that it is technically still possible to uh, keep uh, the, the one and a half C target at this point. How dare Al Jazeera, somebody needs to be fired. Anyway, this is Professor Dave Ray, Chair of Carbon Management of the University of Edinburgh. Quote, this reads, this new report, reads like a credit card statement after a five-year-long spending binge. Our global carbon credit is maxed out. If emissions do not start falling, there will be hell to pay. Close quote. And, and, and again, I'm just going to break in here, guys, since Al Jazeera uh, is not aware of this that if emissions go, if the human race goes extinct today and emissions from global humanity fall to zero tomorrow, there is still uh, well more than enough uh, carbon baked into the cake. Feedback loops are looping. Tipping points are tipping. If emissions fall to zero, uh, the, the temperature is going right on through one and a half, two, whatever. Uh, this I am not saying on any level uh, that I don't encourage uh, reducing emissions. But at this point, it is a joke. At some point, Al Jazeera is going to pull back the next level of the onion and understand at this point forward, this whole talk about reducing emissions is like giving a, a you know, an Advil to someone with stage four cancer. But I still, of course, encourage, do, encourage doing that as I get ready to go down and get a New York driver's license because I've been out of my gas-sucking truck for one day and I'm going into a panic. All right, getting back to this uh, story. <clears throat> if, the world, if the world keeps temperatures to the one and a half seagull, Instead of the 2C goal, huh, yes, 420 million fewer people will be exposed to heat waves and 10 million fewer will be vulnerable to sea level rise. NASA climate scientist Cynthia Rosenweig said on Sunday at a UN session, Cynthia needs to get a brain, in 2018 global carbon dioxide at the, I guess at the end of 2018, uh, anyway, in 2018, <clears throat> global carbon dioxide was, stood at 407.8 parts per million, which was 2.2 parts per million higher than 2017 and set to reach or exceed 410 by 2019. Where are we? Someone tell me, where are we today? I don't have time to go look it up. I think we're around 412, 413 today. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> quoting the report. The last time Earth's atmosphere contained 400 parts per million CO2 was about three and a half million years ago. And at that time, <clears throat> global mean surface temperatures were 2C to 3C warmer, you know, than they are now. Ice sheets 
at both poles melted and seas were 10 to 20 meters higher. <clears throat> Other major findings show that the extent of Arctic summer sea ice has declined at a rate of 12% every 10 years over the past 40 years with the four lowest values recorded between 2015 and 2019. Overall, the amount of ice loss from the Antarctic ice sheet increased by a factor of six each year between 1979 and 2017, while glacier loss for 2015 to 2019 was also the highest for any five-year period on record. Sea level rise is also accelerating, as is the process of ocean acidification, with an increase of 26% in ocean acidity today compared with pre-industrial periods as a result of the oceans absorbing increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The report also found that heat waves were the deadliest weather hazard in the 2015 to 2019 period, affecting all continents and setting new national temperature records. It was 91 degrees on the first day of fall, September 22nd, uh, 2019. It was 91 degrees in Ithaca, New York on the first day of fall yesterday. I'm not sure if that was an all-time record for the first day of fall here in the Finger Lakes or not. <clears throat> the, uh, the summer of, 28, of 2019, <clears throat> which included July as the hottest ever month on record, saw unprecedented wildfires in the Arctic. In June, these alone were responsible for emitting 50 megatons of carbon dioxide. The report also comes at a time of increasing mobilization over the question of climate change, with millions taking part in a youth-led global strike on Friday before the UN Youth Climate Summit on Saturday. And of course, we have to have a picture of Greta Thunberg. All right, we're going to get interrupted by some Doomer chicks heading in the door here. We have a harem of Doomer chicks. Okay, Doomer chicks, I'm in the middle of this rant. So, uh, <clears throat> Guterres wants nations to be carbon neutral by 2050. In other words, they will not add more heat-trapping greenhouse gases into the air than are removed by plants and, perhaps, technology each year. Do you think so? There is a sense of urgency, Guterres said, because, quote, climate change is the defining issue of our time. For the first time, there is a serious conflict between people and nature, between people and the planet, the UN chief said, for the first time. No, uh, Antonio, the first time there is a conflict between people and the planet is when humans climb down out of the trees about 200,000 years ago and started walking around on the ground, setting fire to everything they saw and killing everything they came in contact with. So this is not the first time, but it probably is the last time uh, there will be a serious conflict between people and the planet. Uh, just in case Antonio Guterres is listening to Collapse Chronicles, he might want to change his quote Anyway, back to the story. A larger, more international, dire, sobering, damning report looking at climate change and oceans and ice will be released by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change on Wednesday. So just understand what 
the one we're talking about here is not an IPCC report. Uh, this is the World Meteorological Organization, which is the direct office of the UN. Uh, all right, we have Cornell University climate scientist Natalie Mayowald, right from right down the street here. Natalie has to say, quote, this new WMO report highlights the importance of making more progress on reducing emissions of carbon dioxide. Hopefully, hopefully, this latest UN Climate Summit will motivate more action. Yes, I can only imagine that the latest, how many, when do we have the first one of these? 1992? 1992. Uh, yes, hopefully this latest UN dog and pony show will spur more action. But I need to wrap up today's chronicle of the collapse here on this dreary Monday morning in the collapse of global industrial civilization because uh, I have to go down to the New York Department of Motor Vehicles and throw myself on their mercy. Your old depressed collapsitaria. Like, guys, I... I had to go one day yesterday without being legal to drive my gas-sucking truck. And uh, I am in an absolute panic and suicidal depression. I have got to get back behind the wheel of my gas-sucking truck. I am having a, you know, a, a serious cold turkey fossil fuel uh, addiction uh, crash here. Yes. Uh, so maybe what the UN should do, I guess, is just cancel everybody's driving license. Just make it illegal to drive. Don't make, since we're never going to make uh, fossil fuels and cars illegal, simply revoke everybody's driving license and you will see a revolution on the planet. Uh, this is the, the, the very thought uh, of losing my driver's license, losing the ability to drive that gas-sucking truck. It, it, it truly, this is no joke, strikes more terror into my heart than dying. It really does. That is not a joke. The, the very thought of losing my driving privileges. Uh, my, my, uh, this friend of mine, she actually had a conversation with Barack Obama when he was president. My, my friend, she had about a one minute conversation with uh, Barack Obama and what he told her, what he was complaining about. Uh, the number one thing on Barack Obama's mind talking to my friend was they won't, they won't let me drive. I guess they means the Secret Service. Barack Obama's biggest complaint in his life was that I guess U.S. presidents lose their driver's license. Uh, my God, why would anyone want, want to be that the President of the United States is not allowed to drive? And you better believe that Barack Obama was not happy about that. And I know exactly how you feel, Barack. Uh, one day, one day of not being allowed to drive that gas-sucking truck and do my part to ratchet up emissions. But anyway, I'm going to go remedy that. And if they do not grant me a New York driver's license, I guess I'm going Micah Rupert. It's been nice knowing you. Either I get a driver's license or I'm going Michael Rupert. So it's been fun knowing you guys. Get out there and enjoy your driving privileges while you still can. 
because we're all getting ready to lose our driver's license. Bye, guys.